So some of these should have been a piece of cake for you, right? Like number one, because what do I do? X equals plus or minus three. Exactly. X equals plus or minus three. Excellent. We knew how to answer the questions that I know. She did. Square root. Don't be jealous because she got it right. All right. So X equals plus or minus. Uh-oh, this one has a negative. What does that mean? I, four. So I would say four I. What if you put I four? I for it, that's the same thing. Okay, so if I wrote the number like 3x, right, that's how we would write something, it would be like writing this. So it kind of looks like I talked about yesterday, it doesn't quite look as smart. This is really way, the way you want to write it. So would you mark this wrong? No, I say it. Yes, yes. I might, and I might snicker a little bit as I uh, do that. I'm just kidding. So we're going to try and avoid that. We're going to try. Did you guys even see that while I was writing? Or was I off the screen? Yeah, we seen it. Okay. All right. What about x squared equals 1? x equals plus or minus 1. Plus or minus 1. Everyone should be able to do those three problems yes. without much difficulty. Number 4. x equals plus or minus 20i. Let her do the problem. How do I get there? I subtract 400. <laughs> And then I'm going to square root it. Yep. And if I don't know what the square root of 400 is, yeah. I can draw a tree for it, right? Yeah. Yeah. But if you draw the tree for it, you end up getting what? 20. 20 times 20 is 400. Yeah? yeah. If you don't know that, you draw your tree. It's 4 times 100. 2 and 2, uh, 25 and 4, 5 and 5, 2 and 2, and it looks like a 2 comes out, another 2 comes out, and a 5 comes out. So 2 times 2 times 5, plus what else has to come out? The I. The I. The I, and nobody's left at home. So I have X equals plus or minus 20... I. So far, so good. This one, I'm going to add 49 to both sides. And I get x squared equals 49. Yeah. Square root. And I get x equals plus and minus 7. Right? Mm -hmm. And this one, I'm going to subtract 64. x squared equals negative 64. Square root. And what do I get here? Plus and minus what? 8i. Eight 8i. Eight Excellent. And then we get into the new problems. What do you notice about these guys? Um, there's parentheses. There's parentheses. Oh my hmm. gosh, you have to double them because the x was Careful. You don't have to do what you're thinking. Okay? Now, I did see someone, and no names mentioned, but this is a very common mistake. If I have this problem, what was it, x plus 2 squared equals 25? Yeah. There are people that want to call this x squared plus 4 and go from there. Because it's squared, so x squared and 2 squared, right? Yeah, we can't do that, though, because x plus 2 squared is not x squared plus 4, it's... Yeah, it's, the double That's yeah. The double it's x squared plus 4x plus 4. But we don't have to go there at all for these problems. Nope. There's a different way. So looking at number 7, uh -huh. listen very carefully to my question. Is the thing that's being squared by itself? Um. It's not just x that's being squared. It's that whole parentheses. Is it by itself? Is the parentheses the only thing that's on that side of the equal sign? Yes. Yes, so it is by itself. So I can square root right here. Because the thing that's being squared is by itself, I can square root. That gives me x plus 2 equals, and just like I did above, what do I get here? Plus and minus 5. Now what? Subtract 2, and I have to be a little bit careful here. You ready? This is where it gets tricky. 
positive 5? This is two different numbers, right? Yeah. So what's positive 5 minus 2? 3. 5 minus 2, which is 3. And what's negative 5 minus 2? Bro, this is tricky. Negative 7. So I have to do both the subtractions there because it's actually two numbers, right? So I have to do the positive 5 subtract 2 and the negative 5 subtract 2. Okay. Let's try number 8 then. Is the thing in number 8 that's being squared by itself? Yes. Yes. So I can go ahead and square root, and I have x plus 9 equals positive and negative 2. Yes? Yep. Now, let me show you an alternate way of doing this. This alternate way is more writing, but maybe it'll make more sense. I have two equations there. I really have x plus 9 equals positive 2, and I have x plus 9 equals negative 2, right? Because I've got two answers there. Those are the two equations I'm solving. So I'm going to subtract 9. One of my answers is x equals negative 7. This one, when I subtract 9, what's my answer? Negative 9 and negative 2. You owe $2 and you owe 9 more. You owe 11. Those are my two answers. That's the exact same thing I did here. I just wrote it all together. So some people might find this a little less confusing to write. So go ahead and do that. Oh, so negative 7 means x equals negative 7 means negative 7. Yes. So if I were to do this one the same way I did the other one, I would subtract 9. I'm just trying to prevent, because I'm lazy. Let's get to it. Me too. I'm lazy. I don't want to have to write the equation twice. Yeah. So that's why I wrote 9, and then I just did in my head, positive 2 minus 9 gives me the negative 7. Negative 2 minus 9 gives me the negative 11. That's the same thing as solving those two without having to write the work for both of them. Yeah. Make sense? Yes. Okay. All right, you try number 9 then. You want to see this one? Yeah. Okay. You try number 9 now. So did you start off by getting x minus 6 equals positive and negative 4? So what do you do? You add 6. And if you want to write out both equations, you can. If you want to be lazy, like me, no shame, positive 4 plus 6, 10. Negative 4 plus 6, there's your two answers. Okay, try number 10. Oh, actually, you know what? Let me do number 10 with you. Now, is the thing that's being squared by itself? Yeah. Okay, so let's square root. So I have x plus 5 equals what? Um, Dang it, Franken, you made it hard again. Square root of negative 81 would be positive and negative what? 9. 9. I, that negative sign, I have to put the, not, the I. Now, watch very carefully. I'm still going to subtract 5 because I need to get X by itself. But watch how I write my answer. Because I can't actually do positive 9 and negative 9 because it's not just 9, it's 9I. Nine so you ready? For your mind to be blown. Write that number first. Then do your plus or minus 9I. And that's as simple as you can write your answer. Five plus nine, oh, that's technically two things. It's 5 plus 9i, and it's 5 oh, minus 9i. Nine nine. Exactly. It's like trying to add nickels and dimes. I can't say 5 nickels plus 9 dimes is 14 nickel dimes. Those don't exist. Like, you can't do that, right? Okay. All right. 
How is number 11 different? Because this is about as hard as it gets. The thing that's being squared isn't by itself. So we are going to divide by that first. So I go to my calculator and I say, okay, 144 divided by 6 is 24. So I really have x minus 6 squared equals 24. Now do I have something I can solve? Yeah. Now I can square root. So x minus 6 equals plus or minus, hmm, square root of 24. I have no idea. Not a nice number, is it? No. Can I draw a tree? Yeah. Oh. I forgot about that. Four and three, two and two. What comes out? A two. a two, and what's left inside? A two and a three. So what is that? Two replicated. Okay, so the last thing I do is I add the six. <laughs> now, again, just like this one, one had an I and one didn't, so I couldn't add it. One has a radical and one doesn't, so I can't add it. So watch how I write my answer. Oh my X equals, again, same way, write that number first, the bottom number there. The six. Six, then do the plus or minus two radical six, and that's all I can do there. Oh, this, is so oh, my God. this is as hard as it gets. It's called studying. Yeah, all right, so let's try number 12. Actually, you know what? You try number 12. Oh. Very similar, Shh. very similar to number 11. Very, very similar. Okay, well, at least get as far as you can in the problem. What do I do first? Divide by 2. That gives me x minus 4 squared equals 50, right? Now I can square root both sides. So x minus 4 equals plus or minus, what's the square root of 50? Well, i got to draw a tree. 5 and 10, right? 2 and 5, what comes out? A 5, and inside is a 2. Add my 4, and now I just need to write my answer. X equals what? 4 plus or minus 5 radical 2. It's not that bad. It's, a, it's an ugly answer, but the process isn't that bad. Trust me, I could think of many things that are way more difficult than this to give you. But I'll save them for next week. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Whoa. Ah. All right. I want you to take a minute and try 13, 14, and 15. Nope. No breaks. Your break comes in about 20 minutes when lunch happens. Okay? You try 13, 14, and 15. Okay. If you can do 13 and 14, 15, you are amazing. That means you can do it even just after I teach okay, it. you go fast. I even finish the last you were already like, okay, let's like, whoa. I'll even pause the video. Okay. So... Is the thing that's being squared in number 13 by itself? No. Yes. So I can square root it. There's nothing in front of it. So that gives me x plus 3 equals plus or minus what? 11i. 11 11i. So this one is actually just like number 10 above it. Now I'm going to subtract 3. So I have x equals, how do I write my answer? Negative 3 plus or minus 11i. So in other words, if you can just remember that, shh, 
If you can just remember that any funky numbers go at the end, such as if there's an I, it goes last. If there's a radical, it goes last. Then that helps you remember which term to put first, is the one that doesn't have anything funky going on with it. All right, number 14, I said I think it's the hardest one on the page. Some of you may disagree because there's still word problems, but I think this one's the hardest. What do I do first? Divide. Divide three. Divide by 3. What is negative 36 negative divided by 3? Negative 12. So I have x minus 1 squared equals negative 12. Now I can square root. And holy crud, the square root of negative 12. Dun, dun, dun. Hang on. Square root of negative 12, I know that is going to be equal to the square root of positive 12. I'm sorry, i times the square root of positive 12, right? Uh, and then I'm going to have to draw a tree. 4 and 3, 2 and 2, so I can take a 2 out along with the i. And then the 3 has got to stay home. Oh, snap. Yeah. So the square root of negative 12 becomes 2i radical 3. I put 2 radical 3. 2i radical 3. Um, I understand what you're doing when you say you put 2 radical 3i. Here's the reason why we bump the i in front. The reason is because if you ever put anything outside the radical, sometimes it's unclear as to whether it's actually in the radical or not. Okay. So just to be abundantly clear about that, we put it in the front so there's not confusion. Okay? okay? So, plus or minus 2i rad 3, last thing right here, add 1, plus 1. So what is my ugly answer? It is 1 plus or minus 2i radical 3. That is the absolute hardest I could possibly make these right now. And then number 15 should be a piece of cake after that. I'm going to square root both sides x plus 2 equals what? Positive and negative 2. Subtract 2, so I get x equals, what is positive 2 minus 2? 0. What's negative 2 minus 2? Negative 4. And again, you could write out those two equations if you needed to. So, so? Eh. Eh. I'm getting there. Yeah. Okay, let's look at word problems. Because real life is word problems. Okay, the length of a rectangular garden is three times its width. Now, they have a picture for me, and that helps. They're calling this the width, and they're calling it W. They're telling me that the length, length is three times... W. How do I write 3 times W? 3 times W is just 3W, right? The area is 300 square feet. Okay, this is a rectangle. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Length times width, right? So in other words, W times 3W equals what? The area. 300. What's W times 3W? 3W squared equals 300. What do I do? Divide by 3. And W equals 100. Sorry, W squared equals 100. Square root and w equals plus or minus 10. True or not true? True. False. What? Got We're talking about a garden. I can't have two answers. Because the garden is what it is. It can't be this or this. Is it positive 10 or is it negative 10? Positive 10. Why? You can't have a negative 10 width, right? That doesn't make sense. How big's your garden? Oh, it's negative 10 feet. That doesn't make sense, right? So, I'm supposed to find the length and width. Well, I know that the width is 10. 10 what? 10 feet, because that's what we're talking about. So, what's the length? 
isn't it three times the width? So what's three times ten? Thirty. Thirty feet. See? See? All right, number seven. Seventeen. Last one. You ready? The square of a number. Let me tell you what this means in math language. You ready? I need everyone's attention. Everyone's attention. Thank you. The square of a number. That translated into math is x squared or n squared or p squared or whatever letter you want. That's what that means. Is increased by 27. What do you think that means? And the result, the result is what? Find all the possible solutions. So what do I do? Subtract 27. See, the hard thing about word problems is coming up with an equation. Once you come up with an equation, it's easy. X squared, hang on. 148 minus 27 is 121. Square root both sides, so x is equal to what? Positive or negative 11. Do I need to throw out the negative possible, or the negative one like I did in the last one? Why not? It's all possible solutions. We're not talking about something that actually has a measurement. Okay. So-so? Awesome. Happy studying.